Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So today I'm going to be reacting to Dr. Kadi destroys the myth of different versions of Quran. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. And uh, if there's anything you want us to react to or I personally to react to, please just comment down below. We'll do it in due time. I'm, I'm actually excited for this one because I wanted to hear what um, someone has to say concerning this topic. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Dr. Yasser Qadhi, destroying the myth of different versions of Quran. There are 26 different Quran today in Arabic. Do you even understand Arabic? Do you even know how to read Arabic? The very beautiful Hatun Tash, who has agreed to come as an expert to talk about really what the Quran and the problems we're finding with the Quran. Expert? Really? Do you even understand Arabic? Do you even know how to read Arabic? Um, we've got 26 plus half Quran, 27 Arabic Qurans, and they are disagreeing with one another. Now, you and I are not Arabic speakers. No. What? You do not even understand Arabic? You do not even know how to read Arabic? We, I know you might think we're lying. You mean they, Quran or read it? See, Muslims have never even looked at their Qurans. You mean, listen. They are not looking at their Arabic. Quran. Can I ask you something? Do you mean Quran or reading? No, these are Arabic Qurans. Certainly, this man knows nothing, and he is lying and pretending to be knowledgeable. This man does not even know Arabic have different readings. Let's hear from Dr. Yasser Qadhi. He graduated with a BSc in chemical engineering from the University of Houston, after which he was accepted as a student at the Islamic University of Medina. He then completed Ph.D. from Yale University. Muslims are always happy and proud of the fact that their book is the only preserved book of, uh, of the scriptures of God. That this book, the Qur'an, is not like the Old Testament or the New Testament. It is not like the Gitas of the Hindus uh, or the Puranas of the other religions. This is a book that we know for a fact that has been preserved for the last 14 centuries, ever since its revelation. There are a number of distinct stages of the compilation of the Qur'an and we can summarize them in three stages. The first of these stages, how was the Qur'an compiled in the life of the Prophet ﷺ? The second is the compilation of Abu Bakr and the third is the compilation of Uthman. These are the three primary stages and all of the other Qur'ans that we have present even to this day they go back directly to the Uthmanic stage. So in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ would memorize the Qur'an himself and the companions would listen to his recitation. Very early on however they also began to write down that recitation. We also learn that the Prophet wasallam later on, especially in the Meccan era, uh, especially in the Madani era, he would actually command the Sahaba to write the Qur'an down. There are over 25 companions whose names we know that acted as secretaries to the Prophet who, whose job was to write down the revelation. And the primary secretary of the Prophet wasallam was a young and intelligent man by the name of Zayd ibn Thabit. Zayd ibn Thabit was a neighbor of the Prophet ﷺ and he was a young and intelligent man. When the Prophet ﷺ came in Medina, he was still a teenager and he had memorized many of the surahs of the Qur'an and over the next few years he became one of those who had memorized the entire Qur'an and he became the most personal scribe of the Prophet ﷺ with regards to the Qur'an. In fact, in one hadith in Sahih Bukhari, we read that when Allah revealed verse number 95 of surah number 4, the Prophet ﷺ said to the companions, call Zayd ibn Thabit for me and tell him to bring the, uh, the, the bones of uh, the, the, the camel and the ink that they used to write with. In those days, they did not have paper, by the way. They did not have paper. Paper came into the Muslim Ummah at the turn of the first century through uh, the Chinese. 
In the time of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, they would write the Qur'an on a number of items. The most common item was, the, uh, uh, was parched leather. They would also write the Qur'an on the bones of camels, especially the, the shoulder blade of the camel. This was a large flat bone that they would use. And they would also write it on uh, date palm leaves. They would make some type of uh, the equivalent of what we would call uh, papyrus in our time. Some type of papyrus they would make it and they would write on that. And so the Prophet ﷺ would call Zayd ibn Thabit and he would dictate to him in front of him. He would dictate the verse and Zayd ibn Thabit would write that verse down. And so you can imagine that as these verses were written down, they would have scraps of paper, not paper, but scraps of, of parchment, scraps of material with various verses. And so Zayd ibn Thabit himself reported, during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, we used to compile the Qur'an from different scraps. We used to compile the Qur'an from different scraps. And so, in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, the Qur'an was written down bit by bit, piecemeal by piecemeal, but an entire Qur'an was not written down. The Qur'an, all of its entirety, from Fatiha to Nas, was not put in one book. Rather, Every companion had certain portions that he, he or she wanted and they were not arranged in one book yet. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, within uh, a year of the death of the Prophet wasallam, he had compiled an entire Qur'an, cover to cover, Fatiha to Nas. And this is the first time that the Qur'an is put in a book form, cover to cover. Now this Qur'an was compiled in the 12th year of the Hijrah, i.e. literally one year and a few months after the death of the Prophet wasallam, and it was done at the request of Umar ibn al-Khattab because what happened was that a certain battle occurred, the battle of Yamama, and in this battle which was fought against Musaylama, uh, the, the liar, the, the, the false prophet, a lot of the Hufad or the memorizers of the Quran died, and so Umar ibn al-Khattab came to Abu Bakr and said, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, O oh, uh, leader of, uh, of, the, of the faithful, O oh, Khalifa to Rasulullah, I am scared that if you don't compile the Qur'an in a book form, our Hufad will die one after the other and portions of the Qur'an will be lost. So why don't you compile it in a book form? So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was first hesitant, but Umar radiallahu an managed to convince him, and they both decided to put Zayd ibn Thabit in charge of the job. The same person whom the Prophet sallallahu had assigned to be his personal secretary. And so Zayd ibn Thabit began compiling these scraps from his own collection, and from the collection of all of the companions, and he required that anybody who bring this scrap or this bone or this that, that he was present when the Prophet ﷺ commanded to write it, that he heard it from the Prophet ﷺ, and also he required that the companions heard the Prophet ﷺ recite the verse, either in prayer or in another uh, location. So he required both oral memory and physical evidence. And of course, Zayd himself was a hafid. Zayd himself was a memorizer of the Quran, but in order to verify that everything was correct and sure, he then compiled the Quran based upon the unanimous consensus of all of the companions. The situation remained the same for around another uh, 15 years or so, until in the caliphate of Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu ta'ala, the, another incident happened which caused Uthman to rethink of another strategy. What was the incident that occurred? Well, the Muslim armies were fighting on the border posts of the Muslim lands in an area that is to this day is called Azerbaijan. And then too it was called Azerbaijan. And what happened was that the Muslims of Mecca and Medina had met with the Muslims of Syria, Damascus, other places. They had all met together on the front lines. And lo and behold, they were reciting the Qur'an differently. And the reasons for this will become clear uh, in another future episode. But they were reciting the Qur'an, each one from a companion, uh, that, and they had slight differences in their recitation. And these Muslims did not realize where these differences came from. Later on we will learn that these differences came from the Prophet ﷺ himself. But these Muslims were unschooled in the recitations of the Qur'an, and they began fighting one another almost to a physical fight. They began saying that my recitation is better, your recitation is wrong, I know how to recite, you are ignorant, even though 
all of these uh, companions were reciting, all of these, excuse me, people were reciting from the companions' recitations. Now the companions themselves did not fight. They knew where these differences came from. But their students, those who took the Qur'an from them, they were the ones who didn't know where these differences came from. And so they said, my version of the Qur'an is better. And the other said, no, my version of the Qur'an is better. And so a companion who was present there by the name of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, he said, O oh Muslims, what are you doing? Are you going to fight like the Jews and Christians fought over their books, that they have different versions and different scriptures? O oh Muslims, this is the one Qur'an of the Prophet wasallam, and these differences are not to the level of different versions, they're different recitations. And so the Muslims understood what was going on, and so they stopped fighting amongst themselves. But Hudayfa thought that unless I do something, unless we prevent this from becoming even worse, then the Ummah will start fighting and bickering, and each one will then try to form a different version of the Qur'an. So he rushed home back to Medina, and he entered in upon the Caliph Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala, and he said, O Khalifatul Amir, O Amir al muminin O leader of the faithful, you must do something to prevent future generations from fighting over the book of Allah. One group says my version, the other group says my version. You must standardize the Qur'an such that everybody writes the same spelling, the same script, the same pronunciation. Everything should be the same. So Uthman ibn Affan called a gathering of all of the companions and Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman spoke to them and explained to them that unless we do something and standardize all of the uh, copies of the Qur'an into one standard copy, then we are going to face difficulties down the line. So all of the companions agreed to this, and so Uthman ibn Affan recalled the Mus'haf that was written by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and he ordered a committee to be formed, and this committee was composed once again of the very same person who was in charge of the first one, that is Zayd ibn Thabit, and then as well, three or four other members were added who were very knowledgeable of the Arabic language and of the dialect of the Quraysh. And this time Uthman said, make five copies, not just one. And write it in the spelling of the Quraysh, because the Quran was revealed in the dialect of the Quraysh. So write it in the spelling of the Quraysh and make five copies. And so this committee gathered together and within the period of a few months, they made five different copies of the same Mus'haf Abu Bakr, they made five copies. And then Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala an, sent each copy to one of the famous provinces of the uh, Islamic Empire, the Islamic Caliphate. He sent a copy to Damascus, he sent... A I love that these videos brought to my attention because I've always wondered how even if Muhammad was narrating who actually wrote down some um, what he was saying and gave it to the people because this is really spoken about and it's actually good it feels good to actually come across it because it's filling in some of the gaps that some of us may have some of the questions that some of us may have and we're getting well I'm getting educated right now and I love that he's not holding back he's giving um this historical information as it was and I'm just shocked that there was there were different versions to the extent that they wanted to fight each other that's insane that should teach other religions something if you're going to say well maybe Muslims why should we have different things that's going to uh, cause commotion among us you know why not just standardize something I fully support that all the way I will forever support such a move because it only makes sense we shouldn't have to believe in different things you know and um and i'm sure they took from each of the different books they had it's very very interesting to listen to otherwise um this video is actually going to be in three parts so that i get to digest and give a commentary on the information that's uh been given Hope you guys are enjoying. If there's anything you want me to react to, let me know down below. Uh, make sure to give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Just don't forget to give me something to do. So let's get to the second part of this video. <laughs>